In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly swap faces, especially if you're doing something like family photos. So there's a couple premises that will make swapping faces easier. One is taking your photo in similar lighting and a similar setup. While you can take completely random people and if you want to swap your body for someone else's body, you can do that using this method. But in this video, it's going to look better if more for like family portraits. Like you see here on the screen, this is a photo that my brother-in-law took of my family and I, and it w the lighting was just wasn't great. And you can see that my wife's face is has this harsh, both of us have harsh shadows on our face and you can't really do anything about my face, but there is a, our, there are a couple options where her face is more in the shadows and it's even lighting. Also, this is a trick that you use when you have kids who are smiling in some photos. Sometimes they're not looking. So in one photo, my son is not looking and then the other, he is looking. My daughter has a her fist in her mouth and the other it's a little bit better and there are even some other better options that we can combine up to however many photos you have to pick the perfect facial expression for each person and combine it into one photo so the first step is to bring this into lightroom or whatever editing app you use but it's so easy with Adobe Lightroom because you can send it directly to Photoshop, which we'll be using to actually swap the heads or faces. But first, edit your photo. So here, I'm not gonna go through this, but I did a basic edit of the before and after. You can see before and after basic edit, just brighten things up, warm things a little bit. I am using a few masks to edit the background and the foreground. And even on this photo, the one where I am going to use this one for my wife's face, which isn't in the shadows, I did a little bit of specific editing using the great people mask filter uh, to edit just her face, warm it up, brighten it up a bit. So do all of your basic editing first. And then what we're going to do is you can select the two photos that you're going to use or however many, right click and choose edit in Photoshop. This is going to open up the photos in Photoshop and it just has a better way to take one photo and add it to another. And I was thinking about doing this tutorial because I was literally doing this for this photo and thought, hey, people might want to know how to do this. So here's the photo where everyone looks pretty good. The boys look good. The girls we're gonna swap faces for. So I I'm going to go to the photo that we want to take from. So we are taking from this photo right here I'm going to take my selection tool, so just the quick selection tool, and the settings, it doesn't really matter too much, but I am using sort of a softer brush right here. You can also change the size of these. I'm on a Mac, the control option key, if you drag up and down, that changes the hardness. Left to right makes it bigger or smaller, so I'm just going to see what happens when I select her face, so it selects a little bit more. Really, I don't need much. I just need her face, her forehead that is in the shadow. So I can delete some of this. So if you are on this plus selection and you press the option key, you can delete or you can go into the select and mask tool. And it doesn't matter too much, you'll see, because we're going to use a layer mask to be able to erase and blend better in the next step. So I'm gonna say, hey, this looks this looks fine. I do have some settings that I used previously, so I have a little bit of edge detection, smoothing, feathering on. I've shifted the edge quite a bit. I don't think I need to shift it that much. I can even decrease the shift for this example. All I need is her face. And then what my output settings are going to be are a new layer with a layer mask. So when I do that and click OK, we have this layer separated as a layer mask. And I apologize if you're hearing some echo. I'm in a, my new office at my new house and I haven't set up anything, but I wanted to get this tutorial out. So really what I want to do is take this layer. So with that one selected, I'm going to copy it. Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC and paste it. Now the good thing is with this photo, everything, the angle, the focal length, 
the size of us is the same. So I don't have to really resize anything. If you were taking this photo from a completely different person, you're gonna to have to do a little bit more resizing and that's probably for another day, a tutorial for another day. So what I can do is I can just kind of move this around to get to a decent spot and you might say, oh, that looks pretty good, but I wanna make this a little bit better. So I'm gonna drop the opacity down and as soon as I do that, you can see that things aren't lining up as, po as good as possible. You can also see I'm bumping around with the keyboard shortcuts from my V move tool to the Z to zoom in and out. But with my selection tool back on, really it you can look at any feature. I'm gonna look at her nose and just try to line up her nose as best as possible. Something like that's pretty dang good. And now what I can do is bring my opacity up all the way. And then I just have to play around a little bit more with the edge of things. So you can see she has like a double ear here and that's because the feathering of the, the feathering of the selection at the edge is causing that to look like that. So I'm gonna select my layer mask here. And if you haven't used layer mask before, basically you click that, you press B on your keyboard to select your brush and then you need a black and a white selection here. I'm on white, and when I do white, it adds to my layer mask. And if you look here, it's kind of hard to see, but it's adding white, and white is what you see. So I'm actually going to just add white around the edge of my wife's face. If I turn this off, you can see the layer, the background layer. You can see that I'm actually selecting more of the background, and that's going to blend in even more. You can also drop your opacity, you could drop your flow, you can increase your feathering all the way or decrease your hardness, and that's going to help blend. Now this is going to change if you have a more detailed background. Here I have this sort of abstract out of focus background, so it makes it a lot easier to blend the leaves in together. But now we have a pretty good job. Now the hair on her doesn't look as good, so. Maybe what I'm going to do is actually go in and if I press the X key, it swaps this from white to black. You can also click this little button here, but I want black to subtract. So I might just actually subtract down here so her hair blends in a little bit more. See how that looks pretty good? And it's really just playing with those details, playing with the edge of things, using the feathering as much as possible. And that's pretty much it. Once you're happy with this photo, you can either just export straight from Photoshop, you can continue editing Photoshop, or if you save it, I'm gonna press Command S to save, what's going to happen is it's going to save it to the photo in Lightroom. So back here in Lightroom, we have this new photo that's created and it has the swapped head onto the body. Now, I would, if you wanted to add another photo, I would not send this photo back to Photoshop because that's going to send another version or another copy of it, a, a previously edited version. I would go back to the same photo that's already in Photoshop and say I wanted to take this face of my daughter, I would swap it just using the same exact method. And you could also then from here make any minor tweaks and edits here in Lightroom to the whole photo if you want. So that's a hopefully quick and easy way to swap faces in Photoshop and using Lightroom as well. That's my sort of process. If I was doing family photos like this, engagement photos, couple photography, anything where you need to take one face from one photo and add it to the other so you get everyone smiling, looking their best. So hopefully this helps out. Uh, and if you have any questions, let me know. As always, you can find more tutorials and full courses at videoschool.com. I have a full Photoshop course that teaches everything in more detail. So if this is more, was a little too quick for you, check that out uh, at videoschool.com. You always get the best prices and going through our website really helps us out. Cheers.